Now in other news, our browser extension lets readers change the headlines of news articles. And you won't believe what they did. By Fanel Jean Bass, Amy Zhang, Carrie Carhalios, and David Carter. Headlines are the first thing and often the only thing about a news article that news consumers encounter. And so the role of headlines in shaping how users perceive articles is very important. But although news consumers look at headlines to be informed or entertained, the role of headlines for news publishers is different. For many publishers, headlines are crafted in a way to entice users to click to open the articles, as many publishers run on ad revenue. This enticement is done, for example, by using headlines that are exaggerated or sensationalist or clickbait. In the game of headlines, there also exist malicious actors who want to disinform users or manipulate their opinions, and that is also done through manipulated headlines. For example, by using headlines that are misleading or those that deliberately leave out important contexts. Manipulative headlines, even if they redirect to articles that ultimately present accurate information, are harmful because they not only deceive people into clicking, but also misinform those people who don't click. And these headlines have the potential to be further reshared on social media and spread misinformation. So in this work, to combat the issue of problematic headlines, we use a browser extension to empower users to modify headlines as they see fit. We recognize that different users have different notions of what counts as a problematic headline and what changes to a headline would improve it. For example, a user who likes to know more about a story that they're not familiar with may find that the short headline that withholds that information is inadequate. And similarly, if they think that there is some context that other people should be made aware of at a glance and the context is missing from the headline, then they're dissatisfied with the headline. On the other hand, another user who is familiar with the details of the story, or on the contrary, is not much interested in the topic, may find the headline to their liking. So we're not seeking after a single headline that appeals to all users. Instead, we give users the autonomy to modify headlines as they see fit for themselves and those who follow them. We present ReHeadline, a browser extension we built that empowers users to collaboratively edit news headlines. The goal is for the collaborative editing to yield headlines that are more informative or better aligned with the article's content. ReHeadline detects the headlines on a news article page that the user is visiting and lets the user suggest alternative headlines for it. Other users running the extension who follow the headline suggester and who come across the original headline anywhere on the web will be shown the alternative headline next to the original. That means that if they visit the article's page, or if they see the original headline on the news website's homepage or even their social media feed, they will also see the alternative headline next to it. If there are multiple alternative headlines suggested for an article, one will be chosen for placement on the page based on a set of factors. For example, how many endorsements it is received from other users. Users can also choose to additionally view other alternative headlines that are not placed in situ. We wanted to understand how users would use the tool and whether they perceive value in it. So we ran a user study with 27 participants who use the extension for one week to read news articles of their choice and suggest alternative headlines for the articles whose headlines they found inadequate or in need of improvement. But without a large user base, it was unlikely that users would serendipitously encounter headlines that other users have suggested. So for the purpose of studying how users interact with headlines that other users have suggested, we developed a platform that they could visit to view a feed of the articles that other users had suggested alternative headlines for. We asked participants to submit a couple of headlines a day for the duration of the user study, but many of them submitted far more headlines than what was required. These headlines were from a variety of different news sources, as can be seen here. And the responses to our post-study survey revealed that they in fact valued the empowerment brought about by the tool. We characterized the types of changes that users made to headlines. I'll give an overview of some of these changes in this video, but I encourage you to read about them in full in the paper. For example, many changes were made to correct headlines that were on a spectrum of sensationalist to misleading to perceived as outright false. These were headlines that, for instance, were biased or exaggerated to the point of almost asserting falsehood, or left out essential information that could drastically change the message of the headline, or even were inconsistent with the content of the article. An example of such a change is shown. 
The participant who made the change explained that the use of the word exaggerate implies deliberate deception, but the article presents no evidence of any. Participants also corrected teasing headlines, or those that were clickbait and teased the user about the lack of a certain knowledge. Here's an example of such a headline, hiding that the secret ingredient to making Martha Seward's grilled cheese better is butter. A frequently applied change of headlines was to convey more nuanced information or additional context about the article that the user thought was important. And conversely, some users omitted details that they thought were unnecessary. We also saw examples of users adding sensationalism or bias or their own opinion to headlines. Sometimes participants assumed the role of a copy editor and edited a headline to change its style or syntax or to get a more creative vocabulary. In summary, we saw that what makes a good headline is highly subjective. Some users change headlines in ways that were opposite to other users. We wanted to understand whether headlines suggested by untrained users could be preferred over the original headlines written by professional editors. So we ran another study where we gave over 300 users pairs of headlines, with each pair consisting of an original headline and the alternative headline that had been suggested for it by the participants of the first study. And we asked this new set of users which one they preferred. Overall, the majority liked the original headlines better. However, a substantial number preferred the alternative headlines, and some said they liked neither. We also looked at how the types of changes that people made to headlines influence whether other people prefer the original headline or the alternative. We found that in fact users are more likely to prefer an alt headline compared to its original counterpart when the alt headline attempts to remove bias or sensationalism from the original headline or correct deceptions in it, or if it adds concealed information pieces, basically fixes clickbait, or when it conveys more nuanced information or context. And in contrast, users did not prefer the alt headlines when they added bias or sensationalism, or when they simply copy edited the original headline. In our paper, we discuss insights on the potentials and the challenges of the user empowerment that our tool can bring about. For example, we talk about whether users should be able to choose their headlines at all. One issue is that displaying alternative headlines on articles can impact users' likelihood to click on articles. So a tool like Reheadline can hamper the ad revenue that, for example, clickbait headlines can bring into the journalism industry. The quality content published in the news media is sometimes paid for by the ad-friendly content. So if we attempt to remove clickbait headlines, you might end up jeopardizing the publishing of quality content. So a question that needs serious thought is whether increasing the quality of published content through tools like Reheadline can result in a reduction in the publishing of quality content overall. And if it can, does this mean that problematic headlines should be kept and fed to users despite their interest in having the power to modify them? I invite you to check out our paper to learn more about our tool, our study, and our discussion around its implications. Also, I encourage you to try out the Reheadline Browser extension for yourselves.